So for this video, I'm going to be going through and talking about kind of reviewing each of the red creeps that are currently in Artifact. And when I say review, what I really mean is I'm going to talk about uh, whether they're good in Constructed, whether they're good in Draft, and if they're not good in either of those formats, what they might need in order to be competitive or at least talk about why they are not seeing play. So uh, I'm not going to give any sort of, you know, point values or star ratings or anything. This is just a... A discussion about what makes the cards good or what makes the cards not very good in the current meta. So uh, with that disclaimer, that caveat out of the way, uh, let's just dive right in and start off with Bronze Legionnaire. Uh, Bronze Legionnaire is a 2 mana, 4 attack, 2 armor, 2 health creep. Uh, and though it is a Bronze Legionnaire, it is the gold standard for early game creeps. Uh, this is very aggressive. Uh, very well statted. It will trade into melee creeps and survive and all at the cost of two mana. Um, here briefly I'm going to bring up black. When you compare it to just untested grunt, which is essentially the same stat line but without the armor, uh, this looks really good. And so as you can imagine, because it's the gold standard, uh, it sees play in constructed in uh, like mid-range red decks and certainly in the aggressive ones and it sees a lot of play in draft. This is a great, great pickup in draft for uh, just about any deck running red. Um, there's been times where I've like drafted three of these and then just splashed red because these are that good at helping win a lane early. So yeah, Bronze Legionnaire sees a lot of play just because of the stats. I mean, you are uh, getting a lot of value for the mana invested and that is all you need right now. Next up we have Hellbear Crippler. This is a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, and it says when Hellbear Crippler deals battle damage to a unit, modify that unit with minus 1 attack. So this is why Bronze Legionnaire is like the gold standard for early game creeps. Uh, this Hellbear Crippler at a 3-3 three, three stat line will essentially trade even with a melee creep. The creep will deal 2 damage to it, dropping this to a 3-1. Uh, this will do 3 damage to the creep, reduce its attack by 1, essentially making it a 1-1 one, one for the following turn, but that one attack will still be enough to fill off the Crippler. So, in this case, uh, just matched up against a melee creep, not even counting heroes, uh, you're spending three mana to trade even with a melee creep, where the Bronze Legionnaire is two mana to kind of indefinitely trade with them until somebody plays an additional card or effect. That being said, this is uh, still sometimes seeing play in draft, um, it's a reasonable early game pickup. The modify portion means that if you use this to trade into or stall some enemy heroes, it can be very beneficial. Um, there were some times when I was toying with it in Constructed, but ultimately, again, uh, the value of the other creeps that you can play early on is just so much higher, so uh, Crippler gets left out. And it just basically has to do with the stat lines. Speaking of stat lines... Uh, Mercenary Exiles is next up. Uh, this is a 3 mana creep that has 2 attack, 1 armor, and 4 health. And it also has an active on a 2 turn cooldown. You spend all of your gold, and then it modifies itself with plus X attack and plus X health, where X is half of the gold spent. Uh, this is rounded down, so uh, essentially, if you have 8 gold, you use the active, this gets plus 4, plus 4. Um, this is one of the reasons why Crippler just does not run in Constructed. Uh, again, this is a stat line that, granted it's over multiple turns, but uh, this will trade with a melee creep and survive, unlike the Crippler. And the active on this means that it can potentially, um, for three mana and some gold invested, uh, trade with much bigger creeps or even some heroes, depending on the game state. It can also help push a lot of damage into a tower if it's left unblocked. It's just far more versatile. And even if you never spend gold, even if you never use the active, um, still better stat line than the Crippler, and sometimes just threatening to use the active is enough to put your opponent in a bad position. So uh, this is run and constructed, typically as a one or a two of, uh, but I have seen some lists floating around running it as a three of as well. Saw a lot of play in the uh, Wii Play tournament and has saw some additional play in other tournaments since. And Again, it definitely sees play in draft. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that's a little bit uh, less common in draft because this is a rare and 
that means you would have to pick this kind of early on um, or have it be passed to you but that being said it is a, a quality pickup um, you know it depends on the nature of the pack right I don't know if I would first pick this uh, there are some commons that I think are still just better early pickups things like a Thunderhide uh, maybe even Ogre Conscript depending on what your deck looks like might be a better pickup but uh, it's a it's a very good very quality creep and next up we have Legion Standard Bearer this is uh, a sneaky creep because it's very very good and uh, I think a lot of people were sleeping on it when the game was uh, in its infancy I'll say so this is a four mana creep that has a zero six stat line but its allied neighbors get plus four attack this is very very good in aggressive decks uh, the 0-6 stat line leaves a lot to be desired, but the plus 4 attack can really make certain trades be favorable, whether that's uh, your hero trading into another, or even just getting your creep uh, to trade into another creep and then have yours survive to push damage the following turn. Um, you don't often get like the dream value because uh, when you're playing this, the way the creep deployment works, you have to play it into an empty slot, and so... Uh, there either has to be uh, an opening on the left or the right, in which case you're only buffing one creep, or something has to have already died in the middle, and if you're placing this there, whatever died is, uh, you know, got an enemy still across from it because it killed it, right? So uh, sometimes you'll be playing this to its doom, but the buff is still very relevant, and even if this is just buffing one creep on the turn you play it, and then maybe getting additional value later, um, it is it is sneaky good. It was I think ignored for for quite a bit. And this is one of those cards that um, is very good in draft, and I think people saw how good it was in draft, and then started toying with it and constructed, and it has uh, risen in popularity as a result. But uh, does he play in constructed? Does he play in draft? And it's just a it's it's a great buff. That's that's all there is to say about that. Um, next up we have Rebel Instigator. This is a 4 mana 2-3 creep, but after the combat phase, if this dealt damage to a creep this round, you summon another Rebel Instigator. Um, this, this is a weird card for red because this is really good at stalling. So if you're losing a lane, you can play a Rebel Instigator in front of a melee creep. Um, it will soak the damage from the melee creep and then spawn another rebel instigator that will block or soak damage from another target the following round that's just not something you're usually doing in red uh, whether it's draft or constructed typically red decks want to be the aggressor they want to be the one uh, being proactive and this is just a reactive card so as of right now it doesn't see much if at all play in constructed i personally think i've seen it once in constructed and Again, it's just because most red decks are trying to control the game in a different way, whether that's through being proactive or even in the like red-blue control decks. Blue is still your control base, and then red is just there to kind of help you survive the early game. Um, it's a great filler creep in uh, draft. You know, if you draft a couple of high-quality, high-value red creeps and or heroes, and so you're playing red, but you don't have... Um, just great quality throughout your draft uh, this this is a fine filler creep I mean you don't want a lot of these you know if you're if you're stuck running like three rebel instigators then you might not be as strong in red as you think you are but it's you know it's fine as a one or a two of maybe next up we have Smeevil arms master this is a four mana two two but it has a play effect of modifying a random allied hero with plus two attack um, the, the modify a random allied hero with plus two attack is nice because it's modifying and because it's attack, so it's proactive. The 2-2 body leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, a lot of times this is just going to soak damage and be a chump blocker. I do like this one much more than the green Smeevil, but I'm still not excited about this. Much like the Instigator, to me, this ends up being like a filler hero in draft. It does not see playing constructed in draft. I'm running it if I'm just trying to up my red count to even out my ratios. Uh, I'm usually not like prioritizing this as a pick because the 2-2 stat line um, doesn't do a lot for you and the, the modify an allied hero with an attack is nice but it's, it's not something that's like going to win a game for you most often. So not, 
I'm not gonna dwell on that one. It's it's okay. All right, so Stone Hall Elite. Uh, so this is sometimes called the Cheeseburger Man, uh, and uh, he's got a few other names. Uh, this is four mana, uh, four attack, two armor, two health, creep. So it is a Bronze Legionnaire on steroids. And I say on steroids because you modify Stone Hall Elite with plus two attack and plus two health after a unit blocking it dies. So uh, for twice the cost of Bronze Legionnaire, you can still indefinitely eat melee creeps, but every time you eat one, uh, in this case eat a cheeseburger if you will, your Stone Hall Elite gets bigger. So uh, you play him across from a creep and he eats it. You essentially spent four mana for a six to four creep and that is a big stat line and a lot of value for a creep so uh, as you can imagine because bronze legionnaire sees a lot of play just because of its stat line uh, this sees a lot of play just because of its stat line stone holy is seen in uh, a number of constructed decks it's very very popular it's very very good in draft for all the same reasons that bronze legionnaire is and that's just that the uh, mana to stats the mana to like value ratio is very high with this creep and that makes it very popular cursed satyr oh cursed satyr this is a card i tried to make work for some time uh, this is a five mana creep and for five mana you get an impressive six six body but uh, you summon a zombie for your opponent after the combat phase and so that is just a uh, two two creep so you spend five mana and you get a big six six body but you have to give away value to your opponent every turn that this stays alive uh, i tried making this work in certain control decks where i was trying to use this as a hero killer right open space across from the hero you play this uh this trades into the hero and they hopefully both die and then you never give your uh, enemy a zombie as a result you just spent five mana to deal six damage to a hero uh, the problem is is that's a really like situational outcome and if sometimes you'll play this and then they'll like dodge their hero out of the way or they'll do something to you know increase the health on their hero and then you've done some damage to them but you're also giving them free zombies so as much as i've tried to make this work it's just not great uh it does not see playing constructed as a result and if you can't make it work in constructed where you're purposefully like building around trying to mitigate the negative effect um as you can imagine not that great in draft either i'm not saying that it doesn't get ran in draft but um, it is not very popular in draft and again it's very hard to mitigate the drawback that this brings and as such just doesn't see a lot of play next up we have ogre corpse tosser this is a five mana creep that has two attack and 10 health it's an impressive health stat line uh, this says that you deal two piercing damage to the enemy tower after an allied melee creep dies so uh pretty interesting right like this is a snowballing win more card or uh, in some cases it's like insurance against something like at any cost so if you get a bunch of melee creeps on the board and then you suspect your opponent might be playing a board sweeper that's not annihilation because you need the corpse top uh, tosser to live you play this and then if they have at any cost they have to think twice right like i'm going to take a bunch of damage anyway um is it worth it to clear uh you could try to combo it yourself right like you could play some weird uh prelix decks uh or something along those lines with dimensional portals and things where you flood a board and then you play corpse tosser and then your own at any cost and do a big amount of burst damage um you know fun meme -y things that being said, um, it just doesn't see a lot of playing constructed. I'm not going to say I've never seen it. Uh, I have seen it played, but uh, not in anything that I would consider to be competitive. You're not going to see it at many tournaments. Um, in draft, it's reasonable. Uh, the stat line alone makes it kind of worth the five mana investment at times. A, a 210 body is pretty resilient in draft outside of being hit with something like Slay. And even if you never get the like incidental piercing damage from melee creeps dying you still played a 210 creep it's not terrible um this is a rare and as such doesn't come up very often and when it does come up it's not something you want to likely be first picking in a pack unless the pack just has lackluster options but you know if you have to run it in draft you're you're not like super disappointed 
Next up we have Red Mist Pillager, uh, the OG Ancient Racer. This is a 5 mana 4-2, but after the combat phase, if Red Mist Pillager dealt battle damage to the tower this round, summon a Red Mist Pillager. And it does work the way you think it does. The first one hits and makes a copy, and then the next turn, if they both hit, they both make copies. And as you can imagine, it spirals out of control very, very quickly, and it's compounded even further with cards like uh, Disciple or the Oath in aggressive red-black decks. So uh, this card is in uh, some constructed decks. A lot of times it's ran as like a one-of, because uh, if you win a lane and the enemy tries to abandon that lane and then you play a Red Mist Pillager there, they will have to likely deploy a hero into that lane and then contest it, and you can capitalize on them using resources there by uh, increasing your pressure somewhere else. And if they don't go and contest it, then you've set a clock that will just auto win you the game after a certain number of turns. So um, in many ways, this is used to... Uh, draw the attention of your opponent. I'm not saying that you don't close out games, but uh, at least in Constructed, uh, this is as much a distraction as it is an actual offensive weapon. Uh, in Draft, however, where mobility is not as common and board sweeps are not as common, this can absolutely win you a game, especially in a lane that you've already taken firm control of. Um, it can get out of control very, very quickly. It's a good pickup in Draft. Um, I don't I don't think that I first picked this in a pack, um, but, you know, I, I would pick this pretty highly if I didn't have at least one and I was playing red. Because, again, this really does have snowball potential in draft, and uh, there's less reliable ways for the enemy to deal with it. So it's a really solid card there. Next up, we have Keenfolk Golem. Uh, this is a 6-mana 13-13 creep. So all you have to do to get that impressive stat line is discard your hand when you play this. Uh, as you can imagine, that is a pretty hefty drawback, and as such, this just does not see a lot of play, even in Constructed. Uh, I say a lot of play because I have actually seen it. I saw somebody play a hyper low curve, like Bronze Legionnaires, Untested Grunts, everything that you could think of that was super cheap, to purposefully empty, empty their hand and then dump a Keenfolk Golem. Um, they were not successful. I mean, they were successful in playing the golem. They did not win the game against me, but I have seen it. Um, but that being said, uh, the play effect, the drawback of this is far too high for just stats. Uh, the 13-13 with no siege, no other uh, effects, no armor, no death shield, anything like that, is just not worth discarding your hand. So it does not see playing constructed. I have seen it played in draft. Um, it's not something that you pick highly. Uh, again, in many cases, it's oftentimes like uh, either somebody experimenting or you might run into somebody who's running it as filler or very situational. Like, you know, I'll, I'll put it in my deck and if the time comes, then maybe I'll play it. Maybe uh, you can use it as like a last ditch effort to try to close out a tower, right? You need 13 damage worth of burst. Your opponent's got no mana available. There's an open slot. Boom, you keen folk. It doesn't matter if you discard your hand because you win. Um, you know, kind of a Hail Mary play, that sort of thing, but, you know, you're not, you're not first picking this in a pack by any means if you're playing draft, so, um, again, the, the play effect, just too big of, uh, too big of a drawback right now. This could rise in value if we ever start seeing things that interact with or manipulate our discard pile, and then maybe we want to, like, discard expensive cards with Keen Folk and then reanimate them, some old, you know, card game tricks, but right now, just not worth it. Next up we have Marofell Brawler. Uh, really straightforward. This is a 6 mana, uh, 6 attack, 16 health creep. It's just a big body. It's just a beat stick. Um, has seen some plan constructed in like mid rangey style decks. Uh, it even showed up once at the We Play tournament, and I have seen it surprisingly on the ladder. Um, it's very resilient, survives at any cost. Um, does still die to slay though, does die to annihilation. The six attack is relevant. Uh, that's good enough to uh, put some pretty significant pressure on a tower if left uh, unchecked. And there's a lot of heroes that have, you know, six or even just seven health where um, if they've taken chip damage from a melee creep or something before, the six attack here is enough to threaten 
trading there. So um, not the craziest thing to see in a constructed deck, but it's not popular. And the big reason it's not popular is other than the stats, it doesn't do anything uh, immediate, does not impact the board in a real um, you know, meaningful high impact way. And your uh, six mana turn is typically where you want to start playing your very high impact cards. You know, that's when Annihilation comes online. It's when Berserker's Call comes online. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do at six mana, even if you're talking about a combination of cards, right? Double Oath or Double Assault Ladders, whatever the case may be. Six mana is where the game usually starts to really um, pivot. And just playing a big body isn't super exciting. It doesn't mean it can't be effective, it's just not super exciting so um great pickup in draft uh in draft where there's you know less less likelihood you run into that slay less likelihood you run into that annihilation a big body can be uh, a nuisance and the fact that this comes down two turns before like a thunderhide pack but it is equally as resilient you know you don't get the siege damage but you can really be a thorn in a player's side with a card like this in draft so it's a great great play in draft like i said not super popular and constructed uh, because it's just stats but there it is and then the final red creep is ogre conscript um, this is six mana for a seven attack two armor seven health creep um, this is like the red thunderhide pack this is your finisher your closer if you're running red in draft typically uh, again, I've seen it played a couple of times in Constructed, but much like Marofell Brawler, um, this is just a stat line, and that six mana turn is where your high impact plays are usually starting to uh, come to fruition. So it's not really popular in Constructed, but in Draft, where you're not going to have a deck full of Annihilations and probably don't have uh, Berserker's Call because you didn't Draft Axe or whatever the case may be, um, you know, a 727 is a significant play in draft and if you can pick up a couple of these because this is a common card uh, you can cause some havoc uh, on some very early turns it's very resilient and uh, the seven attack is very relevant there's a lot of heroes in the game that have seven health um, even ones that were recently kind of buffed uh, still have seven health so it trades very well you know it kills bounty hunters and blood seekers and a lot of the blue heroes seven attack is a important stat line and this meets that requirement so uh, ogre conscript not super popular and constructed because it's just stats uh, very popular very common in draft uh, because it's a common card but also because um, the quality of cards and the consistency of cards is that much lower in the limited format and this can have a much greater impact so uh, that is it for the red creeps and you know, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, hopefully I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.